Hello. In this video, I'm going to take you through a detailed solution to the cat-dog problem, which is in strings 2 of CodyMath, specifically the Python problem. And I've actually already coded it, and what this problem has to do is you're going to take a given string, and you're going to count the time, number of times the word cat appears. You're going to count the time, number of times the word dog appears. And if they appear the same number of times, you're going to return true. Otherwise, you return false. So I've actually already coded this, and what we'll do is we'll just start by giving it a run. So I hit go, and then I come over, and there's all my test cases, and it works fine. So now let's take a look at the code and make sure we understand everything. So the first thing we want to do is any situation where we have to count the number of times that something appears in a string, we need some sort of counter to do that. Since we're counting two distinct things, we need two separate counters. We need a counter to keep track of cat and a counter to keep track of dog. Once we've looked at the entire string, we can simply then look if we've seen each word the same number of times and return true or false as appropriate. So the, the larger concept here is we have to use what we've called in our class as, as a reading frame. So that's where we have to move across a string in some chunk and pull out chunks of the string and, and kind of compare it. And in this case, the reading frame is going to be three letters long because I'm interested in three letter words. Before we do that, let's just remind ourselves of substring notation. So in Python, we can pull out part of a string using this, this square bracket notation. Um, so if I have str, a colon b, it's going to take a, a string starting at index a and up to but not including b. So this is the important part here. This is inclusive, exclusive notation. So an example down here, you'll see that we have, there you go. See, so we have an example down here where if I have some string called llama and the indexes are 0, 1, 2, 3, if I do str 1 colon 3, I'm going to get the am because it's going to include index 1, which is the a, and it's going to go all the way to but not include the index 3. A nice little check with this substring notation is if you take the second parameter minus the first parameter, you're always going to get the actual the actual length of the substring. So with questions like this, I can't stress enough, the first thing you want to do is you actually want to work out some concrete cases. So if you scroll up, you have some examples that are always given to you in these coding bat problems. So I'm going to take this example and I'm going to make one up and I'm going to work these out in terms of concrete numbers. So if I'm going to set up a loop, I'm going to figure out exactly what numbers I need to put into that loop to help me generalize it. So if we come down here, the first concrete case we're going to look at is we're going to look at the first case in the example where we have cat dog. So if I write the appropriate indexes above 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we see that the string cat dog has a length of 6, but indexes 0 to 5. The first three letter segment I want to check is 0 to 3 and the last three letter section I want to check is 3 to 6. So a nice strategy with this is when you set up this concrete case, look at your starting case, look at your first one you inspect and the last one you inspect. Now let's look at a slightly different example. So here, the, again, the first string I'm going to check is 0 to 3. And the last string I'm going to check is 7 to 10. So what we're always trying to do when we do this is we're looking, when we look at different concrete cases, we're looking what is consistent between them, and then we're looking for situations where the length might appear. And sure enough, you see right here, you should take note of the fact that this first example is a length of 6, and this second example is a length of 10. It gives me a little bit of a clue as to what to do. So now we're going to generalize it. So both cases start with 0 to 3, and both cases end with whatever the position that the counter is in our loop to the position plus 3. So again, remember when I talked about the idea that substring is going to give us the second parameter minus the first parameter, if I take i plus 3 and I minus i from that, that's going to result in 3. So this is going to pull out a length, a section of the word which is three characters long. So now how do we, how do we generalize 3, 6, and 7, 10? So if you notice that this is from, this is going to be the length minus 3, so the 3 is 6 minus 3. 
And sure enough, that same pattern appears here. 7 is going to be 10 minus 3. So this means I have to, re I have to reach index 3 in case 1 and index 7 in case 2. So how do we generalize that? We see that our generalized rule is going to be we're going to take the length of the string and we're going to subtract 3 from it. But, but again, if I take a look at this here, when I'm working through this, I want i to actually reach 3, and I want i to actually reach 7. So because of that, I'm actually going to have to go up to 4 and 8 in these two cases, respectively. So the generalized rule we're going to set up is we're going to take the length of the string minus 2. And in our class, we've been talking about this thing called these things called our bread and butter algorithms. These are our algorithms that are good starting places to memorize. And the one we've talked about is, is how do we pull out a section of a substring? How do we, sorry, how do we loop through a string to pull out, to pull out, um, to inspect it, a component of a string? And the way we do this is we always start from zero. We go to the length of the string that we're inspecting. And then we subtract of it the length of the reading frame, and that should actually be, yeah, it should be minus 1. So in this case, just to kind of connect this, in this case, we're going to have, we're looking for the word cat, which has a length of 3. Cat has a length of 3. So when we actually generalize this, 0, and the length of the string that we're going to inspect, minus, and the length of the reading frame is 3, minus 1, so 4i in range, 0, comma, length of str, minus 2. So this is a really long-winded way of saying this, and I recognize this, but I really want to stress this point of going through the process, the thinking process here. So now if we take a look at this, here it is, 4i in range, 0, to so the length of the string, minus 2, comma, 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to pull out a section of the substring and then check is it dog. And if it is dog, I'm going to increment my dog count by 1. Otherwise, I'm going to pull out the section and check is it cat. And if it is cat, I'm going to add 1. And then once I've done the loop, I can just write simply what a lot of students here would write is it would say something like if cat count is equivalent to dog count, return true, else return false. This is what a lot of students would write here. And this works perfectly acceptable, perfectly fine. But a nice little thing to note is that notice how if this is true, we return true, and if this is false, we return false. So what you can actually do is a nice little shortcut is you can just return the actual Boolean expression there. That's a nice little shortcut to keep in the back of your head. So now to wrap things up, let's actually go through a concrete case to make sure we understand how this works. So let's trace cat x dog. So the length of this is 5. Oh, sorry, pardon me. The length of this string is 7. So if we take the length of this minus 2, we get 5. So what this means is, notice, my first case here is CAT. And my last case here is DOG. So I have to set my loop such that it can reach this index 4. So I'm going to set my loop to go to 5. And we see that if we take the length of cat dog minus 2, which takes me to 5. So I set my loop up. i is initially 0. I check is i is less than 5. And 0 is less than 5. So we pull out string from 0 to 3. And sure enough, that is the word cat. And so we increment our cat count. Then we change. And we go to i is 1. 1 is less than 5. We pull out atx. That doesn't pass either of our checks. i is 2. 2 is less than 5. We pull out t txd. That doesn't pass any of our checks. i is 3. 3 is less than 5. That pulls out xdo. That doesn't pass any of our tests. i is 4. That's true. We pull out dog, and now we increment our dog count. There's a little spelling mistake here. And then when i reaches 5, which is this section here, we no longer have a three-letter word to pull out, so the, the loop fails, and we exit. We return true. So, I appreciate you staying with me this whole video, because I recognize how long I've been talking. Um, so, of course, this is a tricky thing. And until you get it, once you get it, you'll see it, it's really quite mechanical. But it's really important to take the time and go through and make sure you understand how to develop the thinking behind this. 
As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And keep on programming. It's a lot of fun. Have a great day.